This is episode 78 of the A Free Spirit Life podcast. Welcome, beautiful you. Thanks so much for being here. I'm Shannon Kinney Dew, holistic life coach, intuitive spiritual mentor, artist, writer, and teacher. And in today's show, I am going to get vulnerable with you again. You guys, this awakening process is no joke. (laughs) We are all going through some massive changes right now in our personal lives, in the collective. I know you're feeling it because you've landed on these words. And, you know, every part of our life's journey has opportunities for awakening. And there's something really magical happening right now as the awakening process is quickening. It's getting faster and we're getting upgraded and we're having new gifts activated and we're having remembrances and just things are coming to the surface that are ready to be released to make space for the new beginnings and really the old, I would say, in the remembering of who you truly are, it's all starting to come together. And with great shift, things can feel also rocky and messy and definitely imperfect. So if you didn't listen to the last episode, take time to listen to that. I'm you know, sharing some personal stories here. And this one just happened yesterday. So I, first of all, let me just say it is March 2024 and I have really been reflecting on March of 2023. A lot of massive shifts in my life started happening around that time period and I have decided to just take some time to write the top changes that have happened to me and reflect on those changes while I'm moving forward. And so if that speaks to you, if you're recognizing that memories are popping up or you're remembering some of the growth that you've had in the last year or more, it might be worthwhile to either make an audio recording or journal about it or even just talk to a friend about it because in your sharing, it sparks other memories. It sparks other memories in others if you're sharing it with them. And it's a ripple effect. It has this beautiful reflection quality to it, whether it's you simply reflecting something that happened to you, to yourself, or like what I'm doing here in this episode, sharing some personal stories, sharing some personal reflections. Believe me, I'm not giving you any advice. I just want to share my experience in the hopes that maybe it sparks something in you. Maybe it reminds you of your inner power and your inner beauty and your inner light so that you can go further on your path and shine a little bit brighter today because of something that either I inspired you to think about or do or you inspired you by taking the time for personal reflection. And and that's really a beautiful thing because we move so fast in life, we forget to celebrate our little wins and having an aha moment or taking a healthy risk or showing up in a more vulnerable way. All of those really deserve celebration and That's what I'd love for you to do is if you take time to reflect on your growth and awakening process, take some time to celebrate. We're so quick to highlight what isn't working, what we don't have, what we lack in some way, and we really forget to highlight, shine a light on where you've come from, the growth that you've made, little or or big. It all deserves to be celebrated and recognized and appreciated. So let me tell you what happened. So, okay, I have been going through my own awakening and my own changes and my so is my husband. So he's making some big career moves and I'm also taking time behind the scenes for some creative projects that I will eventually launch. In doing that, I started to have little opportunities come to me that 
made me think, huh, maybe I should go for that or maybe I should just do something completely different. And one of those opportunities was to apply for a job and it was a seasonal job and it was helping to transplant flowers. And what I loved about the opportunity was one, it was very flexible hours. Two, I got to get my hands on plants, which I'm just loving. And three, their mission as a small business is to really emphasize the importance of native plantings. And I just loved that. And I love supporting small businesses. So I went into this idea of applying for this job with the idea to learn and to also give back to the community and to be supportive to another small business. And as I was doing that and going through that process, I started to feel a little tense after the interview. I started to feel like, oh, I don't know. I do this sometimes where I feel very clear and then there's times where I'm like questioning my choices. You know, so I just had to sit with it. So about 10 days went by between the interview process and the time they called me. And I decided within that time period, because what I was recognizing is some old patterns were coming up for me, which is to set aside some of my creative dreams to support others. And there's nothing wrong with supporting others. In fact, if you're listening, most likely you are a light worker by nature. You are a nurturer. You are a caregiver. You are someone who loves to be of service. That feels like part of your mission in life is to be of service. But we're learning how to be of service through joy and not through setting aside our dreams. We're also learning how to be of service while being of service to ourselves, right? And one of my patterns has been to be very supportive of everyone else's dreams and my own personal dreams get set aside. And so I've been learning, how do I do both? How do I be of service and empower others and support their desire to shine bright and to follow their creativity and to start their businesses and to, you know, dream big and to carve their own paths. How do I do that? I've done it through my yoga and meditation teaching. I've done it through my life coaching sessions, through readings. There's many ways that I can be of service. I'm also writing a book and making some art offerings that I am, will, that will support people on their self-discovery and empowerment journey. So that feels really in alignment with what I'm here to do. Even sharing with you like this in the podcast feels like I'm being of service. It feels in alignment. So what happens though is I'm also a mom. I'm also um, helping with my kids' education. I also am married to someone who's stepping forward in his entrepreneurial skills and he's very um, much a creator and I work with a lot of people who are on the verge of bringing their their creative projects out into the world. So I'm a cheerleader (laughs) naturally to everyone and so I started to see that I was getting a little bit caught up in one cheerleading for other people's small businesses and a lot of energy was going to go out, even if it was a seasonal job, a lot of energy was going to go out away from me finishing some of my creative projects. And what's interesting, and this is, I'm sharing this because I'm sure you guys can relate to this. The moment I said, I am committing to finishing my book by this date, and I set my date and I I started diving fully into it, was around the same time that I then applied for this other job that would have taken maybe 20 hours of my writing and my art creating and my other work. So what's interesting though is everything comes to our lives at the right divine timing. And they called me and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I, I didn't think I was going to have to be able to say no to this. And I started talking myself into it. Okay, I can do this. I'll get up early. I will, you know, go help with the transplanting of flowers for four hours every morning. And then I will, you know, 
help the kids with their school and then I will write in the afternoons and I will do my coaching sessions in the evenings. I mean, I was packing my life in and didn't feel right. And anytime you know something doesn't feel right, start to pay attention to how it feels in your body. Do you feel more expansive or do you feel constricted? I started to feel like this weight was starting to like kind of settle in my tummy and my shoulders. And I'm like, oh, this I don't know. I don't know. Right. Well, the good news, but also the hard news was they didn't hire me. <laughs> they found some other people who had more experience than me transplanting flowers. And honestly, I handled it pretty well. And it took me half a day, though, to process those feelings. Now, in, the, in my old self and, you know, years ago, I would have probably been really like embarrassed. I would have felt like, oh my God, I can't even get a job transplanting flowers. Like what good am I? You know, all of those feelings of not being worthy of something. And I can't totally say that that didn't come up for a moment. The feeling of rejection is definitely one of my life's um, karma that I have had to work through. So there was a little bit of that. There was also some creative insecurity that came up. So I had to explore it. I kind of sat with it. And the way that I do that is I usually have to get myself in nature. So I just decided I'm going to go on a nature hike. I'm going to just kind of release this and trust my feelings will come out, you know, and I will be able to, to learn from this, right? So I was feeling a little down a little bit and I went on the, the nature hike and I was able to forget it and I was with my kids and my dog and um, my happy place and I it, the other thing that helps me is then when the house is quiet when I can fully tune into myself I close down my eyes and I sit on my meditation cushion and I go within I go to my heart space I listen I become the observer without judgment and if you're not familiar with meditation or it's not your thing there are lots of ways that you can get centered even listening to guided meditations as a way to quiet your busy mind can help but for me this is a practice I use every night and it's a way for me to kind of release the energy I collected in the day the day and then also reflect on what did this experience, why did this come up for me now and what is it teaching me and how can I learn and expand from it in my awakening journey? And I think one of the things that it did for me is it affirmed my intuition. My intuition all week before they called me was stop giving your power away, stop giving so much of your energy away, get focused on your creative goals. And the word focus came up several times. And the word focus continues to come up in varieties of ways that I, you know, messages I get because I think all of us are really being called right now to Pay attention to what matters most in our lives. Pay attention to where our energy is going. Pay attention to what you want to bring in and manifest and what's blocking you from doing that. And in order to pay attention, we have to learn how to focus and learn what to focus on. And if those of you who've ever gotten a human design or astrology reading, you might have heard the word North Node. And part of my North Node in my human design is literally focus. So North Node is your life's curriculum. It's here to teach you what you're here to learn and what you're here to focus on at this second part of your life. Usually our North Node gets activated around 40 or so. And we come into this life with a set of gifts, a set of strengths, a set of um, experiences that we brought in with us that are very comfortable to us. That generally is your south node. The north node is 
our guiding light. It's our curriculum. It's helping us go in that direction so we can learn that. And for me, it's learning to focus and stay focused right now. So so that's really part of my lesson here. One is to learn to focus on my creative projects while I am being of service to others. Two, really honoring my energy right now and being very mindful about how much energy I'm putting out into the world and how much energy I'm putting into me and my life and my own journey. And then three, for for me, it was that feeling of rejection and discouragement, like being disappointed, you know, which is a normal thing to feel. If you apply for a job, you know, there is a part of you that wants it. And then when they, they say they are going with someone else, there's a part of you that feels they don't want you, right? So not a good feeling. <laughs> I'm learning. And so I released the feelings of rejection. I released the feelings of discouragement and and disappointment. And it reminded me still how creative insecurity has been part of my karma. And so releasing even the feeling of creative insecurity that all came out to the surface just from them telling me they didn't want to hire me. And... Wow. Think about the density of that energy. Energy has weight to it. And so that's why when we're in a good place or we feel excited or we're in nature or we're doing something that is in sync and in flow or in alignment with our gifts, we feel lighter, right? We feel more alive. But when we are feeling out of alignment, when we're feeling drained or dealing with karma or those past emotions that are bringing us down, you feel the weight of it. So when I say that I feel light, joyful, and carefree, that has a different mass to it, doesn't it? That's a different energy than if I say I'm feeling disappointment and rejection, right? So releasing, letting myself feel helped bring that all to the surface. And then I was able to release it through my meditation and transmute those feelings into more um, loving and um, uh, appreciation and gratitude for myself and even gratitude for this entire situation, for the opportunity to apply for a job. I mean, being an entrepreneur, this is the first job I've applied to. Uh, in a very long time. I did apply for another job maybe a year and a half ago. I also did did not get that job. But I am being shown constantly signs from the universe about the timing and the unfoldment and the gifts that I'm here to share. And I know myself so deeply that working for myself and finishing and following up and focusing on my creative projects and working with you all through sessions, through the classes I teach, through retreats, that is so in alignment with my energy. It's effortless. It feels light and free and it's energizing. The idea of having to drive across town early in the morning to stand for four hours taking plants into pots and plants into pots and plants into pots, I know myself well enough to know I could have done it for a short term, but it's probably not the best use of my energy. I could feel that in my body. So I am reflecting this question back to you. As you are awakening to your true self, to your true nature, to your authentic gifts and strengths. What experiences, challenges, opportunities are coming your way that are here to teach you what you don't want anymore, how to best use your energy, how to release what feels heavy and dense and what's bogging you down so that you can be the true expression of who you are in this lifetime so that you can share what you're here to share in alignment with your heart, mind, body, and soul. Because when you are in that alignment, you feel harmonious within your body. You feel more joyful outside of your body, meaning your experiences in this lifetime, the external world that you see and experience feels more light 
joyous, and at peace. So good questions to reflect on. I'm curious if you'd want to share with me what looks like a challenge or frustrating for you right now, but if you were to take time to really get to the center of your heart, what does your intuition say about that situation? What is it teaching you? And how can you flip it and see the light in the shadow? How can you see the karma that's ready to be released? Because I had a choice in that moment. I could have sat in rejection for the next week, feeling like nobody likes me, nobody wants to be around me, I'm not worthy because of that one experience. There's, there's a million reasons why that probably didn't align for me and also for them. But... I used it as an opportunity to release rejection, let it come to the surface. And then when you do that, you feel lighter and freer and you feel more self-love and compassion. And that's where then gratitude is, it, it blossoms really. Gratitude comes out of the heart or comes in and out of the heart when we allow those denser emotions to be released and not wallow in them. And I don't want you to repress them because that's why they keep coming up. So any last bit of rejection or creative insecurity for me is going to keep coming up. It's going to keep being circled up and circled up and circled up again until I feel it and learn from it and release it. And that's going to be the same for you. So yours yours might be anger or self-doubt or conflict or sadness. There might be a variety of different emotions and energetic experiences that are part of your karma, that are part of your life's curriculum for you to learn and expand and evolve from. Do you know what those are? And it's okay if you don't. That's part of this journey is to discover it in the right timing and trust that it's there for you. We are always being faced with new experiences and opportunities to learn and grow from. So healing creative insecurity is something for me. What is it for you? Remember that whatever you're dealing with right now, your worth, your self-worth cannot be taken from you. So do not ignore your own worth, your own value. You matter in this world and so do your dreams. So there's a lot of things that test us and make us feel maybe that we're not worthy. There's a lot of things that test us. But the most empowering thing you can remember is there is nothing that can truly take your worth from you except you. So the more you reflect inward, the more you treat yourself with love and kindness and compassion, the more you will remember that statement. You are worthy. You matter. And no one can take that from you. So acknowledge and honor and celebrate your worth. You are an integral part of this world and you are worthy. Not for what you do, not for what you produce, not for how successful, in quotes, you are. For simply being you. And being the truest, authentic expression of you. And that means shining your light as bright as you can in this moment on your empowerment, self-discovery, and awakening journey. You guys always hear me talk about animals out of my window. And sometimes it's a hawk or a a butterfly. I, I mean, it is a butterfly right now. Last time it was a bunny. I see this yellow butterfly And now that I'm thinking about it, it's one of the very first butterflies this season that I've seen. And it's, it's just flitting around right around here, some daffodils and some little plants and butterflies. And this one being a yellow butterfly really symbolizes lightness of being your light, creativity, power, 
yet gentleness, this ability to flit and float and move with the wind, hopping over here and flying over here and landing over here and being okay with moving from one moment to the next and to the next again. There's something so wonderful and magical and endearing about the butterfly. The butterfly has to go through a metamorphosis to find her wings. And then when she finally finds her wings and learns how to fly, she's light. She's joyful. She's carefree and she's free to be who she is. She flies freely. And that's what we are learning how to do in our awakening process as human beings in this moment of time. How can we learn from the past? How can we learn from the density of our heavy emotions and experiences? How can we learn from our sadness, from our anger, from our disappointments? How can we learn so that we can grow, so that we can expand, so that we can truly step into the fullest expression of our authentic selves? It's a journey. As soon as we find one thing, the next will unfold for us. But every one of us has our unique path. And it feels good knowing we're not alone, that we are falling down and we're getting back up and we're learning along the way and we're finding our wings. And it is an absolute joy for me to get to share with you today to envision what is it that you're learning in your life and have you discovered that you have wings and what's helping you learn how to fly? What is helping you learn how to fly? So I will use this life experience as just one of the many detours that give us the opportunity, give me the opportunity to learn something about myself in this moment. And I am not going to let anyone take my worth away ever again. That that has happened in my life many times as part of my karma. So remember that you are worthy No one and no experience, whether you don't get the job or you do, whether you don't get the relationship or you do, whether you don't get the house or you do, whatever happens in your life, no one can take your worth away. You are worthy of love, of lightness. You are that lightness. And you are worthy of flying freely. So keep following your heart, keep listening to your body, and keep letting your intuition guide you on the decisions you're making next. And if you resonate with this, take some time to reflect, maybe in a journal, maybe recording yourself, calling a trusted friend, whatever feels right to you. Listen and trust in that. Thanks so much for listening today. I am offering an intuitive watercolor class on my website, and I have a new Patreon community. We are bringing free spirits together to share in discussions like this on our own awakening journey. We are supporting each other as well as making space for creativity, for play, for wonder, for curiosity, for that lightness that we all so need in such a heavy changing world that we live in. So go to my website. You can find it at a free spirit life.com or Shannon Kinney do that's D U H.com. Check me out on Instagram at a free spirit life and shoot me a message. Let me know what is going on in your world. What changes are you experiencing and where's your intuition guiding you? I'd love to hear from you. Be well and I will see you next.